Hey, have you ever wanted to cut solid plate steel like it was butter? Well, on today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use one of these bad boys. This is an oxyacetylene cutting torch, and I'm gonna talk you through all the safety and setup and proper operation so you can add yet another skill to your growing repertoire as an up and coming welder or steel fabricator. So stay tuned, you're not gonna to wanna to miss it. All right, in previous videos, we've already talked about the safe setup and operation of using oxyacetylene gas welding. And if you haven't watched those, I highly recommend you watch those videos before you attempt anything in this video. Now, we already know that if we take oxygen and acetylene and we mix them together, we can make a flame hot enough that we can melt base metal and filler rods and weld things together. Really quite cool. But today's video is going off on a different tangent. We are gonna use the same gases to make a flame hot enough to, yes, once again, melt the steel, but we're gonna add extra oxygen to be able to oxidize rapidly or burn our way through metal and allowing us to cut it. All right, so at this moment, we've got our oxyacetylene equipment all shut down and properly bled off from last time, so we're not gonna to touch that yet. But the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off our gas welding tip because we're not welding, we're cutting. And so I can undo this by hand. Notice I did not have to reach for a wrench and you should never grab for a wrench uh, to tighten these because there are rubber O-rings in here that are designed to make that seal for you. And that way you can change these welding tips out by hand. Okay, now we're gonna put on our cutting torch and I always put the cutting torch nozzle facing in the same direction as our torch valves. That way it is an easier and safer setup for adjusting your valves when you're lighting your torch like that. All right, so the next thing we need to know is what is the thickness of the material that you are trying to cut? Because this is going to affect what size cutting tip should be in here and what we should set our regulator pressures for our oxygen and our acetylene. Now, also personal preference of mine, if you've got thin sheet metal you're trying to cut, I wouldn't even recommend using an oxyacetylene cutting torch. They tend to get way too hot and warp the sheet metal in my opinion. So if you've got something nice and thin that you're making, I would highly recommend you jump over to a plasma cutter if you have it and um, look forward to a future video for that. Now, once you know the thickness of the material you're trying to cut, in order to get the cleanest and fastest and safest cut possible, I highly recommend that you look up your equipment manufacturer. They will have a chart where you can look up what size cutting tip and what pressures you should set your gases to for what thickness of material. That is the best and safest way to do this. All right, so for me personally and my experience in 30 years in the trades, I have never cut three, four, five inch thick plate steel with oxyacetylene cutting torch, so I don't really need to know those pressures and cutting tip sizes. And if it's thin sheet metal, I'm gonna stick with a plasma cutter or better yet, go to a Beverly Shear. So uh, my projects are sticking around quarter inch plate, three eighths, half inch plate, and I really who can afford anything more than half inch thick plate these days. The prices have gone through the roof. So for me, what that allows me to do is basically just have one or two tip sizes. I usually stick with a zero size tip. And then all I have to do is remember the two numbers that go with that tip, which for me, I stick with 40 oxygen and 10 acetylene. And if you look at the chart next to me here, you'll see that that fills quite a wide range of the different cutting tip sizes, so you'll be good there as well. Now, if you're running something thicker in the shop, then you're gonna have to look up what your uh, equipment manufacturer recommends so that you get a nice, good, clean cut. And to change out the cutting tips, all you do is you undo this nut, once again, just by hand, and then you end up with your cutting tip. Now on the cutting tip itself will be a series of numbers. So 0 1 101. Uh, the only number we really care about is the first one. That's gonna tell us the cutting tip size. So in this case, it's a zero. And then the rest of it is just a series numbers from Victor so you can order the right stuff. Now, if you can't read those numbers for whatever reason, you still wanna figure out what size this is, you can actually take a number size drill set and fit it to the little hole right in the center of the cutting tip and then look it up on a chart and that'll tell you what size cutting tip this is. Now, to put this back in, just put it in reverse, put the nut down, snug it up by hand, and uh, you're good to go. Now, one of the other things that I highly recommend before you start is cleaning out your welding tip. So you get yourself a tip cleaner set and use the file side to clean off the top, get rid of any kind of carbon and debris, and then use these small little round needle files to get in there and clean out the orifices. Now, Really important, do not try to open the size of the holes with these. So make sure you pick the right size, you're not trying to force it down in there, and just lightly clean out any kind of soot and carbon that would be in those holes. All right, next up is getting our bottle set up and setting our regulators to a proper pressure that we need. So first thing we're gonna do is open up our main bottle valves, but everything I'm gonna do is gonna be in order. So A before O, or acetylene before oxygen, that way I don't forget where I'm at in my progress. 
So one turn counterclockwise on the main bottle valve. That way, if there's ever a fire, you just have to close it up real quick. And next up is our oxygen cylinder, same way. We're gonna go counterclockwise. And remember, if you forget which way it is, just read the top of the valve. It literally says which way is open and closed. We're gonna open this really slowly because we don't wanna have 3000 PSI rushing really quickly against the regulator diaphragm. And um, you should never be looking at these gauges when you're opening them up. There has been cases where people have opened up tanks really aggressively and have those gauges explode out in their face. So slowly counterclockwise, and then we need to open this all the way because of a double sealing valve. We don't do that at a slightly leak uh, oxygen on the back, which we don't wanna waste. All right, next up is setting our regulator pressures. And I highly recommend that you open up the torch valve for that regulator so that you are setting the pressures to what it will be when it is being used. Uh, you'll notice that you watch your regulator when you close them up, that you'll actually see it go up a couple PSI and that's why we set it while it's flowing. That way we have the correct pressures. So we're gonna crack open our acetylene valve, about a quarter of a turn. And then when you're looking at your regulator, you're gonna have two gauges. The back one is the bottle pressure with the higher numbers and the one in front that has the red line at 15, this is your pressures coming out of your torch. So you spin the regulator clockwise. It's the only thing on in this bottle set that's opposite. Should feel it kind of getting a little tighter and we're gonna to go to 10 PSI. Now, very, very important, never ever go up to 15 PSI because if that happens, uh, fires and explosions will ensue. It suddenly becomes very unstable. Now, shut this off before you jump ahead so that we don't forget you've left it on. All right, now before we do the oxygen regulator, it's important to know that when you're using a cutting torch, the original oxygen torch valve needs to be open and you're gonna open it all the way. That way the oxygen can continue all the way up to our new oxygen valve. So this is what we're gonna use and we're gonna crack this open a quarter of a turn before we set our oxygen regulator. All right, so same thing, we're gonna go clockwise and we are going to 40 PSI this time. Okay, and then make sure you shut off your torch valve. Now with any gas or electric welding, it is always a good idea to check out your area and clear out anything that's gonna be flammable or combustible. And when we are using a cutting torch, it's even more so important because it's got a lot of sparks are hitting the ground, molten metals hitting the ground. So you gotta make sure all that stuff's out. And I highly recommend you do not have anything like your hoses underneath where you're cutting because you could always have a fire that way, especially when a hot piece of metal comes down and starts burning into the rubber. Before we start the torch, uh, we gotta have something to cut. So I've got a piece of quarter inch flat bar here and I've got a machinist square and a piece of soapstone so I can make some nice, accurate, straight 90 degree cuts. And then when I got that done, we'll show you how to set up a fence. We can cut really accurate. All right, when you go to make your cut, you can totally freehand hold this and try to get it as straight as possible. In fact, I highly recommend you get a piece of scrap steel and practice those skills. However, there are some tips and tricks to help make your cuts a lot straighter and cleaner. And here they are. Tip number one is have a seat, lean up against something. Uh, you gotta steady yourself just like you were doing for gas welding. Make sure you're not shaking and, and having this unstable all over the place because that's just gonna reflect in your cut. Tip two, if you are gonna freehand make a straight cut, use your gloved hand on this part of the cutting torch to kind of simulate the action of when you're playing pool. This hand is gonna be guiding it and this one is just doing the movement. So you can have very nice, smooth, steady movements and get a great looking cut. Tip number three, if you are going to make a nice straight cut, why not grab yourself a guide? That way you have something for the edge of the cutting tip nozzle to rest against and then you just have to worry about how fast and slow you're moving and that straight line is taken care of by the guide. Now you can either grab yourself a big, big, thick, heavy piece of metal with a nice straight edge on it, keep it dedicated for that, or if you really don't have anything like that, you can even just grab a piece of light angle iron and a couple of vice grips or C-clamps to clamp it into position, double check it's where you want it before you go and it will make a very nice straight cut for you. And if you are gonna use a guide for having a nice straight cut, it's really important that you understand that the center hole is where the cutting action is happening, not from the edge of this welding tip. So you have to space your guide over a certain amount so that you have it cutting right on your nice accurate line. And if you are being super accurate, 
each cutting tip is actually going to have its very own width of cut that will blow out the material. So if you don't want to be short a couple of millimeters, you may want to look into a chart and see what the actual width is going to be. So now that we have a guide to help us make a nice straight cut going in this direction, we also have to worry about the coupling distance, which is the distance from the end of our cutting tip to the top of our material. If we are too close, there's a chance that we're going to suck up mill scale and slag and start clogging up the tip. And if we are too far away from the material, then we're going to lose some heat for our, from our preheat flames and it usually stops cutting. So where you want to be is when you set it for a neutral flame, you want the tips of your preheat flame just to be touching the surface and maybe an eighth of an inch away from it. Now uh, tip number four is if you get yourself a cheap hose clamp, you can actually tighten this up and use the top surface of your guide as a rest and that way we'll hold that coupling distance the entire time as you're cutting. The next thing we're gonna talk about is how fast you actually move the cutting torch. And it has a big impact on what the cut will look like when you're all done. Now you'd be surprised how fast it is. In fact, most people when they're starting out tend to go a bit too slow. So I've got kind of a general purpose size zero cutting tip and I'm cutting quarter inch to half inch plate today. So I'm gonna be roughly moving 24 inches per minute kind of like a good standard guideline. It obviously changes if you have thicker or thinner material or you change out your cutting tip sizes. Now what you're ideally shooting for is that the metal gets blown out and burnt out from the cut completely, separating the two pieces when you're all done. And you'll know you did a good job because the piece will cleanly fall off when you get to the end of the cut. Now you're gonna have two conditions that'll happen if you're going too slow or too fast. If you're going too fast, what happens is the preheat flame can't keep up with the speed that you're going. And so you start to lose temperature from the base metal to steel and it gets to a point where it actually stops cutting. So if you are trying to make a cut and it keeps stopping on you, chances are you're going too fast, slow down. Now with cutting this too fast, you could see that there was a lot of stops and restarts along the way to get this to cut off, which is not good. But as the speed starts to speed up to what it should be, you'll notice that there's a nice crisp, sharp edge on the top here. And that's kind of what we're shooting for in a good clean cut, just a little bit too fast in this case. Now the other condition is if you are moving so slow that the cut has been already cleaned and burned out, but we're still applying heat on the surfaces, what happens is the slag or the molten metal that you just burned out on the bottom can kind of bounce back and forth and actually rejoin again. And so as you were cutting, it starts to join behind you and you get to the end of your cut and your piece doesn't come off. And the reason why is the slag is joined up underneath and at that point you're going to have to either try to cut it again or hit it hard with a hammer to get it to fall off. Now it's going too slow of a cut. You can see a couple things. So there's a bunch of slag on the bottom here. If there gets to be too much of it, it can kind of join up and kind of weld itself back on as you're cutting. And when you get to the end of the piece, it doesn't come off. Now in this case, the piece did come off, but another big tell that you're going too slow for your travel speed is looking at this top edge. And it's a little hard to see, but the top edge is a little bit melted. It's kind of rounded over a bit. And that's uh, the preheat flame putting too much heat. It's getting a little bit too much hot. And when you blow the oxygen, not not only are you oxidizing and blowing out the cut, but you're starting to do the top edge a little bit too. So if that's the case, speed up a little bit with your travel speed. Now, when you go to start your cut, you're gonna use the preheat flames to heat up the metal and the ideal temperature is just as the metal starts to go liquid. That's when you're gonna hit your oxygen lever. If you hit it too soon, all that happens is it won't cut. It won't ever start either. So you're gonna have to back off and get it hotter. And if you hit it way too late, what happens is you've got way too much metal oxidizing on the top and it tends to make a lot of slag, a big your mess, you probably have some rounded edges on the beginning of your cut as well. All right, it's showtime, time to start this up. So we're gonna be doing A before O, so we're gonna crack open the acetylene valve just a little bit, use a striker, never use a lighter. Make sure you're not pointing it at yourself. Now, when you first start it up, you're gonna see some black smoke. We have to turn up the acetylene, open it up until it just disappears. So like this. Okay, once it just disappears, we're done with the acetylene, we're going to move on to the oxygen. Remember this torch valve is open all the way, so this oxygen valve is now what we're using to adjust this to get to a neutral flame. If you don't know what I mean by neutral flame, make sure you go back and watch that safe operation and setup video. I have a very good video about that. So we're going to slowly turn up the oxygen so it doesn't just puff out on us. And we're going to have three cones of flame. So we're going to bring the moving cone, cone of flame, right down to just touch the last cone of the preheat flames there. Like that. Now, because we're doing a cutting torch, we also have to depress the lever and adjust the flame there to be neutral so that it's a neutral flame when we're cutting. So, a little bit more. Like that. 
when it's time to shut down your torch, there's this age old debate of whether you should be shutting your acetylene torch valve first or the oxygen, or there's a ton of people that think it doesn't really matter. Now, the reason why this debate keeps going on and on is because we are all talking about gas welding, but we are using different setups. And I'll give an example. If you are using small welding tips, when you shut them down, either way, you don't really notice anything happening. But when you start to get to the bigger torch tips, rosebuds and cutting torches, if you shut the acetylene off first, you're gonna hear a loud bang or an explosion. And that explosion's inside your torch, and that's your flashback, and what your flashback arresters are preventing going up your line. So the proper 100% legit way of doing this is to shut off the oxygen first, let it go back to a red feathery acetylene flame, and then shut off your acetylene. That is the 100% correct method way. You just aren't noticing it when you're using smaller torches. Now another really great use of oxycetylene cutting torch in an automotive shop is whenever we are taking apart 40, 50 year old exhaust systems and suspension components and things that are so badly rusted that sockets and wrenches are just not going to cut it, that we can get to the cutting torch. And so I've simulated a nut and a bolt kind of frozen up here that we are going to hack and kind of just slice away at it. So I'm going to show you that right now. So now that the nut and the bolt are gone, flush right down to the washer, this would be a quick job just to take a hammer and a pin punch and just push that fastener all the way through. Now you do have to be a little careful as you're slicing away at this because if you have your angle a little bit too steep, you're going to start gouging into the base material and you don't really want that. Uh, this is also useful for doing rivets. In fact, they even sell special cutting tips that have a special curve on it so you can get really close to the base material and cause the material to blow away from it rather than cut in. Now, if you want to put a hole in the middle of your piece and you're not cutting from the edge, that's called piercing. And there's a couple things that you need to know about that. You're still going to have the same coupling distance. You're going to get that surface just turning shiny liquid before you hit the lever. But just before you do that, you're going to back up the distance away from the material, probably about double the distance. That way, when you hit the oxygen lever, you're not going to suck up a bunch of the slag and have some popping going on. Yes, another video from Way of the Wrench and on how to become a welder. This time on how to use an oxyacetylene cutting torch. Hopefully you were able to get something out of the video and if you have any questions or concerns, why don't you just put them down in the comment section and I will get back to you as soon as possible. And look forward to a future video where we will use all the skills we learned today to make some kind of cool project. If you haven't already, I would really, really appreciate a subscribe from you. That way I feel really motivated to keep going and make awesome content for you guys. The subscribe button is literally right there. Yeah, why don't you hit it? Perfect, thank you very much. And if you hit that post notification bell, you will know exactly when a video drops so you can watch it right away. Well, till next time, take it easy.